You are now tuning in to the Top Shelf Edition, presented by Northern Superior Brewing Company. Northern Superior Brewing Company always brings forward top shelf product and customer satisfaction. Located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Northern Superior is available for local delivery or provide a friendly yet exciting atmosphere inside its tap room. Follow Northern Superior on Instagram or Facebook. You can also check out their website at northernsuperior.org. At Northern, we're superior. It's a Northern thing. Now how about some hockey chat? Let's get to the crew inside the Gem Studios, bringing you Gem and the Game Sports Show Hockey Edition, Top Shelf. Booyah, and it's time for the Game Sports Show. This is the Top Shelf Edition, Season 2, Episode 3, presented by the Tap Room at Northern Superior. It is your host, David McKaig Jr. I am joined by Alex Parr, Dane Hantrell. Let's go first over to Dane. Dane, how's it going, pal? Going good. Just taking in a viewing of the uh, Boston Red Wings game right now. And uh, Detroit just scored, so they're up 2-1. Getting uh, dominated, though. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Watching hockey while talking hockey. Real fun. Alex Parr, my friend, how's it going? Buddy, I'm a part of the game Sports Show Renegades on NHL 22. We're an absolute wagon right now. The boys are buzzing. I couldn't be any better. Oh, we are an absolute wagon. I think Dane should have the honors of saying that term. Okay, that's fair. We're a wagon. We're wagon. Absolute wagon. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm happy that Parr went to that limit. Uh, where, well, let me give you this straight here. We are winning a lot. And we're losing very few. When we lose, we may lose in overtime or to a team that spends 16 hours a day playing. But we are fucking sick. That's my brief summary to an extent. Now, to the back to the show, top shelf edition presented by North Superior. Uh, the top room at North Superior uh, is what I should say, which is obviously through North Superior Brewing Company. I sit here enjoying a nice 11 p.m. Well, that's almost kind of suiting for the time that we are recording currently but nonetheless follow northern superior brewing company on facebook instagram or just get your ass to the tap room it's fantastic or maybe you just want to go there to buy some beer lots of options available that's between this 11 p.m option the Houndtown pale ale you know you got the original brew you got northern light which is great for the cows if you're someone like me the beer is absolutely delicious, okay? Northern Superior Brewing Company, they're part of the Game Sports Show family uh, for almost four years, putting over that now. And, of course, the game entertainment and media powers the Game Sports Show soon to have our launch of YouTube. Very exciting, of course. We've had a little bit of delays from the Game Sports Show end and the TPEM side with getting uploaded with YouTube, but we are coming. It's around the corner. And our first YouTube upload for the Game Sports Show on the TGEM Network will be the Theo Fleury episode featuring myself and Alex with Theo Fleury. And, well, I saw the clip already edited by our own Alex Flood, and I know both Dane and Alex saw little teasers of it. It is off the charts. Fans are going to be enjoying it. And par- people are going to be enjoying the interview in general. Yeah, that interview was so much fun. Like you said last time we were teasing it, he wanted to go longer with us. He was having a blast. And I can tell you, if the interviewee's having a good time, the listener's going to have just as good of a time because they're willing to, you know, spill the beans. You want to know the steamy deets on that guy's career? He's got it for you. So uh, make sure to stay tuned to all your Game Sports Show channels. Uh, when that drops, you're going to want to be one of the first to listen. No, and that and that's the key thing, right, is that we have a lot of big things coming with the brand and with the show, and we want to make sure it's done perfectly, especially with the show and the brand, and we'll get into more details at the appropriate time for that. But this is Top Shelf, where we talk hockey. Okay, we talk local, regional, and national, just like all of our other shows that we have. You can check on thegamesportshow.com. You can also check the Game Sports Show on Instagram. And speaking of fucking Instagram, if I may rant for one second, I lost my personal page <laughs> on Instagram and I am so rattled towards Instagram. I had a temporary lock on my, uh, on my account. I've had to reactivate it. I went through 10 plus times doing the help form, sending the picture of myself with a passport, with my ID, with the code, my name, my aim, uh, uh, fed up Instagram. That was me. That was on that third party app. I don't know what it was. 
but I don't know what it did or what it connected. It was me. I've utilized all of my login information that I could present to you. Just give me my personal page back because I had a lot of information on there that I don't want to restart because of your stupid bullshit. Don't hesitate to get me back in there. But the Game Sports Show Instagram page is still running, which is the most important in my eyes. So at least I still get a little bit of Instagram uh, knowledge. But any of my friends that have may only reach out to me through Instagram, well, sorry, I've been ignoring you, or it seems like I have unfollowed you or even blocked you. I promise you I have not done that. And just if you don't mind Instagram, please you know, look at the email that you sent me to send back to you and don't hesitate to unlock my fucking page. Hashtag hurry the fuck up. Anyways, there's my rant for the day. We got tell hockey. me how you really feel, Dave. I can't. I can't tell you. You're putting a mask on. It's been literally since last Sunday. Okay, that's the 21st of November. <laughs> my fi- my fiance's birthday day. Okay, and then my Instagram goes kaput. And it's now November the 30th that we're recording and we're talking hockey. But with hockey, the game sports show I said where you can follow us on social media. We have a lot of shows that you can check out. But with hockey, we're gonna go through the agenda right now. Myself, Alex, and Dane who who I've accidentally actually muted, uh, Dane, as we sit here on Zoom. So, Dane, if, before you talk, you might want to hit unmute because I accidentally muted you. But anyways, uh, before, when we talk hockey, uh, we're going to go through myself, Alex, Dane, are going to pick a topic each. And when we pick a topic each, we're going to ramble about it, a little back and forth action. And then when that is done, we're going to veer towards wrapping up the show uh, with some local content. If anyone's wondering what local content means, they're outside of Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma. Yes, we're going to give a little local love uh, to the Algoma regional. So we got lots of topics, though. We're going to be spitting back and forth, which is eating up a little bit of a good chunk of the show, just like my intro has. So let's go to Alex, and let's get you going with your topic. I'll respond first, then I'll slide over to Dan. Dave, you are the general manager of an NHL team. You're like a second or a third seed. You're going to make the playoffs. You're gearing up for it. You're looking to add a piece. You need some more depth scoring. What if I told you I got a player? He can score 20 goals in his sleep, 50 points in his sleep, and he's battle tested. He can throw a hit. He can take a hit and I'll retain half his salary. Sounds pretty good, no? Sounds pretty appetizing, but what's the angle? What am I getting squeezed for? Well, he faked the vaccine card. His gambling problems have put him in debt so bad that he put it against his new contract that he's on. Uh, and honestly, the Rolodex of problems that this guy's had off the ice probably precedes how good and long his resume is on the ice. It's a Vander Kane. Dave, is a Vander Kane going to be on an NHL roster again this season? I say yes. You know, I'll keep my answer a bit more brief so I give Dane a bit more air time since I ate a big chunk of my uh, introduction no longer talking about Instagram and talking about beer. Uh, so I'll flat out say with Evander Kane that I have said that I would love to take my host hat off here for a second. I'd love to see him in Toronto. But because of his talent, like you said before, you mentioned all of his background drama, per se, scores 20 goals in his sleep. You know, he get 50 points. He's a top six forward, power forward type player that grinds, um, you know, that can go in front of the net, get goals. Uh, arguably wasn't always the greatest defensively on the defensive side of the puck, but he did improve with maturity. But if, if I'm looking at the background side of the drama, here's where it gets interesting. If I'm the Toronto Maple Leafs, heck, even if I'm the Edmonton Oilers, a team that is younger, even though they have some seasoned veterans on each team, it's kind of that young culture. I feel like that might not be the fit for Evander Kane. I feel like Evander Kane needs to go on a team uh, that's more of that veteran type presence that's going to make sure that they keep them in line and more of a strict team. And realistically, I don't know if that's a playoff team right now that's uh, going to take that gamble to go change their locker room. You might have to put them in a locker room that is on the uh, rebuilding phase, but on the upside of it, they're not just starting, uh, and maybe give him the opportunity to get his mojo superstar to put on both back to be in that first line presence with a with a young stud and maybe a couple veterans that are there. Someone like that's on the uh, cusp of making the playoffs, or like I said, that uh, final seed that they're looking for. And some teams that come to mind uh, for myself. 
Uh, I'm not really looking at the Atlantic division. So sorry, Boston fans. Uh, if I'm looking at the metropolitan division, I am looking at a Pittsburgh Penguins type team. I think him playing with okay. Crosby, Crosby or Mal might be a good fit. Uh, Washington, the Capitals. Uh, there's Ovechkin will keep him in line. <laughs> uh, very much so. So there's them. Uh, I really think uh, the New York Islanders, a team that's really struggled this year, can ut- utilize some of that. Uh, so they would be interesting. So I have three teams for Metro. If I'm looking at the western side of the, the conference, I may consider the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, what might be being a good fit. Uh, Minnesota Wild is on the cusp for me for it. Again, they have a lot, there's some young studs on that team. I think that might change a few things. Uh, I honestly think a good fit for him might be in Vegas as well, uh, but Vegas doesn't have the cap. They've already traded. They're playing on GM mode in NHL 22 right now, so I don't know if that would really work. So, And I don't think the San Jose Sharks want to trade him to a divisional rival. Uh, so will he play in the National Hockey League again this year? Yes, it will be with San Jose first, and then if he's moved, he'll be at the deadline or worst case scenario in the off season and some salary retention will have to happen. But I think a team that is on the cusp, like I've mentioned, Pittsburgh, maybe Boston, if you want me to be nice and Colorado, I think that would be maybe some teams that should consider taking a swing at Evander Kane because they can use that extra top six to maybe put them in a better position. But Dane, that's my short brief answer. I'll give you the full floor a bit longer here with us. Yeah, that was really short and brief there, Dave. Um, I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I, I kind of see a scenario where Vander Kane may not ever play in the NHL again. Oh. Listen, I don't think he's ever going to be playing for San Jose, at least not in the NHL. Um, he's obviously been sent down to the minors, cleared waivers. you got to look at his contract, right? $7 million, three years left. That's a hefty price tag for a guy that's you know, unpredictable, to say the least. So I think, you know, the colossal fuck-ups that he's had along his career seems everywhere he goes, he has a problem, whether it's been, you know, in Winnipeg or Buffalo he's played in, uh, San Jose, I think I'm missing another team. Um, so, yeah, it, he's just an issue with, uh, with all the teams he plays on. And I honestly, sure, I mean, I, I'm sure there might be a team that might take a chance on him, but. Uh, I just, I, I just think unless you kind of restructure that that price tag on his uh, on his contract, or I mean, I don't see why San Jose would even want to eat up any of that contract. But I suppose they still have to pay him if they keep him. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I'm gonna kind of lean with like I'm not gonna kind of go on a rant on you know who I think he's what team he might end up on because I like I honestly truly believe that he might never play another game in the NHL. So that's kind of my opinion on the matter. <laughs> Before we change the subject, who was the uh, NHL's problem child last year? Anybody remember? Mark Bergevin? No, just kidding. That's not funny. No, uh, the, the problem child in the NHL who is on a roster this year with 19 points in 20 games. Oh, I do know this. Can you give me the team? Can you give me the team? It's, it's Carolina. Yeah, Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, you're right. That's right, Dave. It's Tony D'Angelo. If that dude can get on a team, literally who's had problems on every single team he's been on since junior, that, that Evander Kane is going to be on a team. Evander Kane, I can almost promise you, if Montreal can draft Logan Mayo, if Coyotes can draft, what was that? Uh, I can't remember that guy's name. Double M. Honestly, it's probably worth it that I don't know who it is. Evander Kane will be on a team if those guys can make teams. And I mean, when you were talking Metro teams, like, go ahead. Makes $1 million this year. That's it. Not $7 million. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But that guy was starting, that guy's starting fights in the locker room using racial slurs and junior. And if he can find a team, I think Evander Kane can find a team at three and a half. I mean, San Jose's already said that they're going to eat up half of the contract just to get the guy out of there. Pittsburgh. I thought that was a good suggestion. I don't really see how Carolina could do it. Uh, I can definitely see how they did it with Tony, like you said, only a million bucks, but um, I don't know. I don't think the NHL is forward thinking enough to not have a Vander Kane on a team. Honestly, I'll say right now that you bring up a good point, Dan. That is Tony D'Angelo. You do. 
one million dollars. Evander Kane, though, if San Jose goes to a team and says, "Here's fifty percent retained," and you're a team that's looking for that top six help, and you're looking for an affordable option, I, as I mentioned, I, I think there's a certain fit with a team that isn't young, maybe immature. Right? You're, you're looking for a team that can handle the drama of Evander Kane, and despite who he is, people say, well, you can't change anybody. I, I'm not a believer in that. You know, you can compare basketball with Ron Artest. Artest. You know, they, uh, Dennis Rodman, the, the guys were absolute beauties, okay? They had their own on, off-ice issues, okay? But maybe Rodman's a bad example. But you, they were able to go to the court eventually in their later stages of their career, and they were able to resolve their matters. And on Chicago... When Rodman was there, they, he had a lot of issues, right? As he moved on and forward, the, the background shit kind of stopped, not much. But he, he, again, the teams that he was on wasn't the best fit for him to be a bit more mature because that wasn't going to change. But someone like Ron Artest, when he was on the, you know, the Lakers and the kind of things changed for him, that's where it got a little better as, as he grew in his career. So I feel that with Evander Kane, going back to hockey, because this is what we're talking about, Evander Kane being in the right situation, it could work for him. Evander Kane, yes, is making $7 million. But if you eat up ha- half that contract, you get him for a third round, second round pick. I'm thinking, I'm thinking honestly, it's a low grade prospect and a third round pick for him. I know that's low, but to get rid of that contract in today's NHL, you're going to have to do that. You might have to pay the other team a third round pick to take him. So, you know, after you do that, you get a player that can solidify your top six in ways that you wouldn't believe. And I know, Dane, and you can attest to this, the Leafs, and maybe not as much. I think the Oilers got a pretty good, good chemistry going on. But you can't tell me, if, as an Oilers fan that you are, if you're Ken Holland and they come across and give you an option to get a top six forward to come in, or if I'm Kyle Dubas, or if I'm um, Joe Sackick, or somebody that said, okay, I'm San Jose, here's Evander Kane, 50% retained, give me that low-grade prospect, they'll never play for you, and give me that third or fourth round pick, and I'll give you a top six forward who immediately is going to turn around your organization from the top six end, because he's a threat on the ice. Despite his drama, I think you can change that. Do you not, do you not agree? Yeah, like, okay, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I see the raw talent in Evander Kane. He's a perennial 30-goal scorer. Great hockey player. He has a lot of upside, you know, when he's on the ice. And, and I'm not saying he's not going to go somewhere, but, like, you, you, to your Ron or test point, the NHL doesn't tolerate that shit like other sports leagues do. True. I feel like you look at the NFL and the NBA and all the fucking shit that goes on in that league, the, the NHL rarely has issues you know, that make headlines like that. And, and Evander Kane has certainly made headlines. And, yeah, I mean, if there's going to be other players available. I mean, I think you might have to see a team maybe be desperate, especially if there's going to be other guys out on the market that's, you know, a similar kind of, you know, player top six guy. That's what you're looking for for a deep playoff run. That just You, you just got to think about the, the morale of the team, the, you know, the attention that it brings. Um, I, I, I just, it's a big risk. Like as far as Edmonton, I don't want him in Edmonton personally. I'm fine with what we got up front. So I'd be rather looking for defense. Yeah, Dave. Um, I don't think you should want him on the Leafs either, man. No, I, don't. I, I, I don't. I think if a team's driving, you don't force a circle into a square hole. No, I didn't. And that's why I didn't say their name. I was giving an example that if someone's going to give them to you, I was just using the Leafs and Oilers as an example. I said the team. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if you're the general manager, you got to at least entertain it for a second. Like, OK, all right. What do you got for me? But I don't think anything more than that. Listen to this. This is where he's going to go. He's going to go to fucking Arizona because Arizona is going to trade a bunch of players like Phil Castle. And they're going to need to get to the cap floor there. So they'll bring in that. Oh, that dumpster fire of an organization and he can rot there. Yeah, exactly. But, what can make I, it any I, worse? I, I, Vander Kane? Come on! <laughs> exactly, right? He can't make it any worse. So, And like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's 50-50, you know, if he makes it back to the NHL or not. I just, like I said, I think, you know, a lot of, especially in the NHL, you know, they don't tolerate that kind of stuff. And he's been in the league for almost 10 years, if not 10 years. He did play for the Thrashers. So, Honestly, after the season that has been so far and the 
confirmed now allegations on a lot of stories, nothing would surprise me anymore for any sort of piece of shit having a job in the NHL. Yeah, and, like, if he's still not vaccinated, then, like, he can't even go play for a Canadian team either, so. <laughs> That's what do you mean? He got his fucking crayon printed out fucking vax card himself. He's, he's handed it over. It's like from bench warmers when he's got the picture of his face that says, I am 12. It just says, I am vaccinated, and it's a picture of a Vander Kane. I'm going to say it right now, Pittsburgh Penguins. I don't know why. I, just, I, I feel like it's going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. But Dane, yeah, when you said penguins, I'm like that makes sense. I like that. Dane, your point or your, one of the one of the topics you want to bring up. I know we got multiple to bring up. So going to you next. Yeah, we might as well talk about Montreal, and we can kind of throw Vancouver in the same mix. Obviously, both teams horrendous start uh, to the year. Um, you know, kind of in the basement of the standings right now, and uh, Montreal is the first team to make a move. Mark Bergeron, after, I believe, 11-year tenure in Montreal. It's kind of crazy to believe that he's been there that long. Um, you know, cup final last year, didn't get it done. Um, you know, kind of put all his cards on the table. Um, you kind of got to look at, you know, what the future of that franchise is right now. They're kind of in limbo based off of, you know, who they got on their roster. I wouldn't say they have a plethora of uh, good prospects in the uh, the pipeline. So, um, yeah, I just uh, – he went for it last year. He didn't get it, and I think he kind of seen the writing on the wall um, uh, early in this year. So, yeah, just uh, obviously we can kind of talk about, you know, who might replace uh, Mark Bergevin uh, full term as the uh, as the new GM and uh, some sexy names out there, um, Patrick Waugh. Danny Briere. No, Patrick Waugh yeah, will not get the job. No chance. Everybody's favorite analyst, Pierre Maguire, who is currently working in the Ottawa huh. Senators system right now in player uh, development. Don't do it, Montreal. And now Roberto Luongo, another guy that's kind of on the uh, on the table for uh, Montreal. And I would obviously like, you know, you got to look at Vancouver. He spent some time there too. So they're, uh, I, I, I would think that uh, Jim Benning is going to be looking for a, a new job uh, here in the near future. So if you guys just kind of want to talk about, uh, yeah, who you kind of think that might be up next for the uh, the GM replacement in Montreal and kind of where uh, you think that team should kind of go uh, looking into the future, whether it should be a rebuild or kind of stay status quo and keep going for playoffs. So, uh, Dave, I'll uh, start with you, bud. Oh, you're come over to me. Uh, so I'll say, I'll say flat out Montreal. I talked about it on the ESPN 1400 edition of the Game Sports Show yesterday with Scott Nason. And I went into pretty lengthy chat about both Montreal and Vancouver. And to sum it up, that Montreal and Vancouver are in tough positions. I think Montreal uh, is too far behind in the Atlantic, even this early. And I'm not saying... Uh, that Vancouver isn't because obviously I think the Pacific has been pretty good this year. Uh, so that doesn't mean that they're not, uh, but I think they're starting to hit more of the panic button uh, because I think the expectations, I think people may call me crazy, but I think the expectation was a bit more there for Vancouver. And why do I say that for a team that's made this up, uh, the Stanley Cup finals last year and a team that didn't even make the playoffs. It's because Montreal did start without Carey Price. They started without Shea Weber. They did overachieve last year in the playoffs. You know, they, they did make some good moves in the offseason, such as David Savard. I'm a big fan of that move on defense. Uh, Bergevin's done a great job, I think, with signing, such as Joel Edmondson as well. Uh, but Vancouver, right? Oliver Ekman Larson, Connor Garland. You know, you, you make these moves with having Elias Patterson, Bo Horvat, Brock Besser, JT Miller. Right, Tyler Myers already in the fold that you're paying six million dollars. Quinn Hughes, Thatcher Demko, Thatcher Demko, who golfed with Brendan Brooks this year, analyst on our uh, TGM platform. Fun fact, uh, maybe a potential future guest. Tip, tip. Uh, but we have a team right now that should have been better than what it was, and I really think that Vancouver and Montreal, I would say by Christmas time, if they haven't had some sort of turnaround. I think it's time to start thinking a little bit earlier of cleaning house. And I think they should start looking at making moves a bit earlier instead of waiting for the deadline, because I think this year and next year are very good drafts, especially next year with somebody named Connor Bedard and Mitchkoff. They got some nice talent coming through. Now I'm not a believer in teams tanking, but 
if you're a team that's going to be rebuilding, quote unquote, I think right now is the time because you have some star studded talent and generational talent, which is the appropriate word coming up. So I think Montreal with this move, when the new GM goes in, Dane, you brought the names to the table. Danny Breer is very interesting. I think that'd be awesome. But ultimately, I think Robbie Lou, you know, and tomorrow somebody might get signed for that role. So I don't want to go too much into it. But I think with his success at the World Championships this summer, where a good friend of uh, uh-huh. Joe, Colin Miller, um, you know, the, 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 where he played and was an alternate captain before he got hurt, uh, he built a pretty good little team there, right? And this is a guy that has shown that he can handle being a GM. And maybe you bring a young guy in who can relate to the players, uh, who can relate to the players to a degree. Um, that would be the best. And I think people are um, kind of forgetting as well uh, that, you know, how um, uh, Alexander Burroughs is with the Montreal Canadiens. Okay. Burroughs and the Longo, they're friends. People forget. Mm. So my scenario is that, you know, he played with them in Vancouver. You know, there might be a little inside track there. We're like, hey, give Robbie Lou a chance, right? I'm not saying that's going to always work in the National Hockey League, but there's just a little bit of too much, like, too much of a fit, I feel like. I know Patrick Waugh, no. The guy got like, booed out of the stadium, then he cheered, then he goes and wins for a cup for Colorado. This might be in French-Canadian, that maybe be water under the bridge, no. Danny Breer and Robbie Lou are the front runners, in my opinion, and I think it should be Robbie Lou. I think that'd be a great fit for, for Montreal. He can come in there and start looking at the retooling phase for Montreal, and by Christmas time, and this, or by the end of this year even, it's time to look at trading Carey Price, it's time to look at trading Tyler DeFoley, and moving Jeff Petrie as well, trying to move three big pieces and get some massive returns to get some picks for the next couple years and drafts. And I think there's a couple teams that wouldn't mind to carry price, especially if they can eat up some of that salary. And let me name some teams, Colorado. Again, I'm naming Colorado again here. It seems like they're going to have all the money in the world. Edmonton Oilers, Dane, you may or may not agree, but I, despite their goaltending doing as well as they are, I think that Carey Price wouldn't be too bad in Edmonton. Uh, like, I think there's some movement opportunities there for Montreal. Quickly with Vancouver, Benning's got to go. I don't know who's going to replace Benning. Vancouver, again, I think that's another team by Christmas, end of the year. Move pieces out, get draft picks this year, because I don't think next year is going to be the same result for Vancouver, unfortunately. So try to get some picks this year and rebuild that pool. Open up some salary cap. Move some of those shit cap as best you can to retool for the new GM and do those moves when the new GM comes in. Alex. Uh, I don't have much else to say other than hearing Roberto Luongo's name in that conversation for the first time was yeah, I was like, that does make a lot of sense. He can work from home. Uh, and I feel like the fans wouldn't be too mad. In a time where they could use some good PR, it would not be too bad. Um, but aside from not really having much else to say other than agreeance, how about we do a Freaky Friday scenario? Jim Benning, new general manager of the Montreal Canadiens. Mark Bergevin, new general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> and then there's your Stanley Cup final. How's that? Well, that sounds like an uh, absolute disaster uh, and sounds like it'd be perfect for <laughs> sports, though. But you can't tell me there, Alex, is Montreal, if you, is that not kind of an appealing job? The, look, I'm not, and we're Leaf fans, but Vancouver and Montreal, those are pretty appealing jobs for general managers that are looking for jobs. I mean, yeah, go live in BC or go live in one of, if not the craziest hockey market. I mean, if you can win a cup in Montreal, you'll have a statue up. And I mean, I'm sure the same can be said about Vancouver. They're still sniffing for one too. Um, And it's not like you're working for the Arizona Coyotes. I mean, both of them have a long way to go as organizations to kind of figure out their identity or just kind of what path they're going to take. And they just kind of need a guy to um, kind of lead the way. Um, as for Montreal, I just don't think Patrick Wall's got a chance. I just don't think he's going to listen to ownership. I think he's going to, he's kind of too, I'm going to do what I want. Fuck you. If you think anything else, um, that's why I kind of think Roberto Luongo does make a lot of sense. Like you said it. And the more I think about it, the Burroughs thing, and I think he's a little bit more moldable than Patrick Wall would be someone that can actually take a little bit of advice or critique, um, just because it'd be his first shot in managing aside from the world championships like you said but it went really well there i think i don't know 
there's a lot of jobs up for grabs in the NHL, and I they're big shoes to fill. Because if you mess it up any more than it's already messed up, I don't know what those organizations are going to do. Dane, let me tell you, so you can talk about your, your topic with Montreal and Vancouver and kind of go on a little bit of a rant uh, with it yourself. You have uh, Jeff Gordon, who just, kind of, who just got signed there for the management. He's kind of going to be the guy who shapes uh, out this team. And I'm looking a bit more in the background a little bit. And Jeff has that youth kind of look in the position. He's a 53-year-old. Uh, he was formerly with the Rangers. I, I really think that this is a guy who would guide – uh, maybe this organization in terms of in the right path and bringing in a French speaking GM, trying to relate to the fans that way. And I also know there's a little bit of ties between Jeff Gordon and uh, kind of some of the players that are in the running, not too big, but there is ties in terms of knowing Danny Breer and Robbie Lou. So it's very interesting uh, for those two. Uh, but I will say that Jeff Gordon was the guy that they brought on right away and it seems like Jeff Molson is uh, instilling the trust into Jeff Gordon for leading this organization to a, a turnaround. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there's going to be some big changes coming in Montreal. Um, you kind of look at the roster too. They have a lot of, you know, they basically have three second lines. So they definitely have a bunch of guys that they can definitely move for pieces. I mean, I'm pretty much on board for, you know, tank this year, tank next year, sell off your Pain for Shane? And new coach. New, well, maybe not a new coach. They might keep through charm, but obviously new GM. You got Caulfield there. You got a couple. You got Suzuki. I think, you know, have a two- or three-year rebuild. It's going to suck for those guys, you know, after, you know, their first couple of years heading to the cup finals and then having to do that. But I just don't see – this team being able to kind of, you know, with kind of where Bergeron's, you know, mind was going, I, I just don't see it being sustainable. Um, so, yeah, I look at them to be pretty big sellers at the uh, at the trade deadline. As far as GMs go, I mean, Patrick Waugh would be exciting, at least from a fan standpoint. So, um, he, he apparently was asked about it and uh, said if they called him, uh, he would pick up the phone and he, he seems, he seems intrigued by it. So um, yeah, obviously former coach of the Colorado Avalanche, one of Jack Adams there. And then uh, with the Quebec Ramparts, I think he was the coach GM, everything there. So uh, he definitely has a background in the management uh, aspect of the game. So, um, and then, yeah, same thing with Danny Briere. Uh working in the East Coast League right now. I can't remember the name of the team off the top of my head. So, And then, yeah, Robbie Liu, also uh, the assistant GM of the uh, Canada team. So uh, all those guys have uh, some experience in that background. So I think uh, I, I think it would be cool if it was any of those three, um, uh, somebody that's a little bit recognizable, and I think it would be kind of suiting uh, for uh, Montreal anyways to have kind of a bigger name up there. And uh, obviously I think we'll go in the French-speaking uh for their GM and then yeah Vancouver um I mean you know when I looked at their roster and uh you know where I thought they'd be at the start of the year I thought they would be for sure competing for a top three spot in Pacific Division um obviously it turned out to be Calgary was going to be the uh the Canadian team not named the Edmonton Oilers that kind of uh, took that extra step this year so I really don't know what they're going to do in uh, Vancouver. Obviously, I think Benning's definitely gone. I think Travis Green's lost the room a little bit there. Um, I think, you know, Hughes and uh, Pedersen missing training camp, coming into the season a little bit late. Obviously, uh, it's definitely affected Pedersen. You know, he's not even averaging uh, half a point per game right now. So, yeah, it's a bit of a shit show in Vancouver. Ekman Larson has not looked great there. Um, that's a lot of money um you know Myers it's a lot of money on a back end that's not a very good back end right now so um I think they have you know some of the right pieces there I think they need some tinkering but that uh that Ekman Larson deal might uh might set that team back but uh you know you never know a coaching change and uh, a couple moves um with the team uh you know shake things up uh they can uh, see a bit of a, a switch around there but uh they keep losing games. I mean, 
every every game you lose, it's just harder and harder to crawl back. So I think uh, Vancouver definitely has to look at you know potentially being a seller at the deadline. So um, yeah, and then like I said, maybe Luongo goes to Vancouver. You never know. Obviously, he played some time there, brought them to the Cup final. So you know maybe kind of go for that uh, that cup he never got there in a in a different role with the team there. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a rough time for a couple of the Canadian teams. Uh, at least our guys are, uh, are doing well so far. So, uh, well, yeah, so, yeah, the playoffs I, haven't started yet, Dane. Well, I, I know. That's not even literally, I was just literally going to say that. The, 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 the season yeah. is irrelevant at all <laughs> if you're an Oilers. Or yeah, at least Vancouver and Mont- Montreal uh, get their pain over with and they can face reality. We, we're just a. <laughs> Full of ignorance again. Oh, look at the Leafs. They're hot. They're going to do great in the playoffs this year. Yeah, fuck it. Here's the thing that I'll say. I'm ready to be hurt. Here's the thing that I'll say quick. In 2018-2019, the Leafs finished the record 46-8-8, and they lost to somebody named Boston. And guess what game in the first round? In in the season 2019-2020, after 23 games, which is pretty close to this mark now, a little bit less, 9, 10, and 4. Is bef- and that was a six-game losing streak, and they fired Babcock, and they, shot, and they got Sheldon Keith, and they turned around the season. I saw comments saying Vancouver still has time if they fired this, this, made this move, like Toronto did. I saw a comment on one of the sports outlets. They didn't even refer to Montreal, so I'm going to tie in Montreal and Vancouver into this. They are not 9, 10, and 4, those teams. They are not. They are significantly under that. They have won less. They've they've only won half of the losses that they've had. They are not doing too well, so you can't compare those teams. So starting to hit the panic button is way overdue. And I think and I'm surprised Vancouver hasn't fired Benning yet because that's always seems to be the first motive of move is fighting or firing the leadership, bringing in a new GM to help redo the change. If there's one team that can turn around the season. I think it is Vancouver. I think that is one team that could more than Montreal, but I still think it is too late. And if I'm Montreal, I've got to say quick, Jeff Petrie, $6.25 million. You have him on the books for. You have Tyler DeFoley, 4.2. Joel Armia, 3.4. You have Nick Suzuki at a new contract, 7.8 coming up. You're not moving him. But you have... Ben, Chir- ben Chirot, who is a uh, 3.5 million uh, and UFA next year, a veteran guy probably isn't going to stick around. Jeff Petrie, Ben Chirot, uh, you ha- also have to look at probably moving Tyler to Foley, Joel Armia in those moves as well, as well as Carey Price and Mike Hoffman, who's making 4.5 for the next three years until he's 35. Move those contracts wherever the hell way you can send them ASAP. Now, fellas, I'm going to go. No, to- they're just a Matt Murray or Evander Kane away from making the playoffs. That's all you need. Claim both of those guys, and you'll be Stanley Cup bound for sure. Uh, you know what? I agree with maybe bringing in Phil Kessel to Montreal. Okay, that would make sense. That would be great. What? I'm just kidding. Waste, what a waste of assets. Why would you need Phil Kessel in Montreal now? That's a joke. But I saw Phil Kessel because Toronto's still paying him $1.2 million this year. The last year of that. Fun fact. I just wanted to say Phil Kessel on the show because I do love Phil Kessel. And no, he'll get traded somewhere. Yeah, how can you not? He's going to go to a contender. He's, where's he going? Where do you think? Where'd you? Second, secondary scoring. You guys are bringing back Kessel for his last. I think he, well, he's a free agent that year, no? Yeah, he is. Bring him in as a rental. <laughs> Phil Kessel. Don't Phil Kessel worry, with Austin, Austin Matthews. <laughs> uh, Justin Heichel, and when he hears this, he's going to cream in his pants thinking about that. Big. <laughs> now, Phil- I, would love, I would love to see that. Phil coming home. Now, biting. I want to talk about biting. Okay. Biting could be a numerous thing. You bite into food. Yummy. You sexually bite if you want. I'll say it. Mm -hmm. Okay, where are we going with this? Maybe that's where you're like, "Mm -hmm, okay. But biting on the ice is not really the way. (laughs) Okay, as the Mandalorian would say when he says this is the way, that's not the way. Okay, biting on the ice, Mr. Brandon Lemieux, on a Kachuk, which I'm sure some people might go, but it's actually the wrong Kachuk (laughs) that you bit uh, that people would probably cheer for. 
Jokes aside, though, you probably shouldn't bite on the ice. He got five games for biting. Uh, and the reason why I said ah and pause, because I'm not really an ah type guy, is because I want that moment of silence there for people to think of getting bit for a second and realizing, holy fuck, that would hurt. <laughs> uh, now, police in the game for, for biting isn't obviously tolerated. Lemieux got let go. But let's see, I want you to both to bring in a hypothetical scenario. What if you got bit while you were on the ice? How the hell would you react? Dane first. Um, I, I probably would have reacted similar to uh, Brady Kachuk. It uh, would have been a little shock, um, <laughs> not something you see every day in the NHL. I mean, it's happened a handful of times the past but uh yeah either that or i probably would have just you know thrown a a bomb at the guy's face for doing that um yeah so it's it's a fucking weird thing to do um like i said i i saw a list on psn a couple days ago i can't remember all the names that were on it but uh yeah it's something that's happened time to time uh brendan lemieux five game suspension so uh well learned um I, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I mean, it's I it, I I think obviously with COVID too, and just just the COVID era, and you know, all diseases and all that go around. You know, breaking skin and biting somebody like all that fucking shit. So, yeah, definitely no place for it in the game. Um, I'm, I mean, I would have almost gave the guy ten to really make a statement. So. Sure, we'll see it again, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of interested for the the next uh, LA Ottawa game if uh, there even be an, even is one uh, this year remaining. So, um, yeah, just don't don't bite people when you're playing hockey, kids. That's, I, that's my. I mind. probably would have kissed them and asked them when dinner was. <laughs> Love that, Par. What would you do? Is that what you have done? Give him a kiss. Uh, give him a kiss and ask him when dinner is. You know, depending on the context of the bite. You know. Like you said, there's many different ways. How am I supposed to interpret it? You know, maybe he was blame, being playful. I, if I, for knowing his father, I'm sure he doesn't want to be hated. Like his father wasn't hated, but we had somebody on the show named Darren McCarty. Uh, Dane was a part of that podcast upload that you can check. And I think Darren McCarty enjoyed beating the hell out of him at the brawl at the Joe <laughs> fight night at the Joe. <laughs> and he, when it comes to the Lemieux guys or the Kachuk guys, it seems like, you know, they're in the center of drama somehow. And if it's receiving or taking and Lemieux was receiving or sorry, taking and Kachuk was uh, receiving for this. But Dane, I know you had a bit more points before we get to the conclusion side of the show. This has been top shelf presented by the tap room and Orange Spirit Brewing Company. This 11 p.m. went down very smoothly. Mm, got to get some of that in you. Hey, boys, you got to get some of that in you. But Dane, you had some more points you think about bringing up to the, to the table while we were off air chatting. Yeah, just one more. Uh, Jake Zabrask, uh looking like his uh, tenure in Boston will be uh, over sooner than later. Uh, he's demanded a trade out of Boston. Uh, apparently has expressed his opinion um, last season um, that he wanted to move. But uh, I think he's kind of, you know, had his, had his ends there uh, with the organization. So, um, yeah, you got to look back at that uh, that 2015 draft, also the McDavid draft. Uh, Boston had three uh, picks in a row. Um, Dorbro, Dabrowski, and Sensision. Um, two of them not playing in the in the show. Um, Dabrowski had a good start out to his career. Last couple of years hasn't really found that uh, that scoring knack that he was uh, kind of getting used to in Boston. I think he had two 20 goal seasons there. So yeah, he's, uh, he's going to get traded at some point. So um, obviously a lot of ties with Edmonton, uh, Louis DeBrusk, our color commentator that uh, called games for the Oilers. Um, kind of cool to see him go there at what cost though. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, there's obviously a bunch of teams in the NHL that are uh, looking for a top six talent, a uh, guy that's good in front of the net, you know, uh, guy that can put you know 20 goals in the back of the net uh any year year in year out uh if he's on the right line so um yeah i think you know just being buried on the third and fourth line he hasn't really found that same success that uh, he had starting out with boston so just uh yeah maybe where you guys think that uh the brusque uh, might uh head to and uh what do you think the cost uh what boston will be asking for 
And uh, Alex, what's his contract uh, sitting at? How, well, how much is he? Like, like, what's his uh, price tag? Million ish, three point three or something like that. He's making three point three. I mean, that's three point six seven five. Pretty manageable. See, and three point six seven five. Like, man, that. Go ahead. And I'll say right now, quick. Uh, I always say quick, but it's never that quick, is it, fellas? Uh, but you, right now, I saw a few trades that I was kind of, um, let's say, intrigued with because I think there's a like Elliot Friedman stated that there's like eight teams that are looking right. You have Calgary, Carolina, um, Colorado, Edmonton. Um, the, the list goes on. I think even Toronto was thrown on that list, but I don't really see the the fit there. Uh, but I do see DeBrusque moving to a team that kind of really sticks out to me because Boston still wants to make the playoffs this year because of some of the players they have. And I saw an interesting trade on uh, that was actually on cap friendly. So this isn't through any trade, but I thought this was actually a pretty good proposal. Jake DeBrus, the San Jose Sharks with a second and fourth round pick for Tomas Hurdle. Uh, Hurdle is a can play center and left wing. He's a UFA. Uh, this upcoming year, he's a top six forward, something that Boston could also use and have rotate along their lineup. Uh, gives them that extra edge offensively. I think Boston may be looking for another defenseman. Uh, but I really think that Tomas Hurdle and that trade really made sense. And uh, to San Jose, a younger team, so they're but they're on that. Uh, they're on that borderline, right? Uh, I would also think that maybe moving him to the Colorado Avalanche for like a Shane Bowers, someone who hasn't moved up yet. M- uh, Martin Coat is another guy uh, and maybe a pro- another pick in there. So that was another trade that I thought was very interesting. Uh, but Calgary and Edmonton makes the most sense, right? Because of where he's from, but he's from Edmonton itself. But it almost seems like, I don't know if Edmonton would because of maybe the cap, maybe they wouldn't. I think they want to focus on a net before they would go that route. Calgary maybe would already has their situation net, and on the back end, potentially they would look at adding a forward more right away. So I feel like Calgary might be more of a front runner than that than Edmonton, even though I think the best fit for him would be in Edmonton alongside somebody named Connor McDavid. I think people may have heard of him. Good hockey player. He knows how to play hockey. You can check him out on YouTube uh, in the odd NHL game. He's on the odd highlight reel. Uh, but I really think that would work, but that Tomas Hurdle thing made sense to me. But par, that's where I think he'll end up, Dane. A, tr- a trade can happen after we record, and we could be wrong, but there could be 10 teams to fit on. But I think going to a team if he's a contender. But I think the best fit maybe on a team that's looking for younger talent so he can play those top six minutes and be a part of the team through a retooling phase, looking to maybe win a cup in the team. Alex? I, I, would, I would agree that he would. But Calgary would be a good fit for them. I kind of see. Yeah. Okay, you look at how good their goaltending's been. I've obviously playing solid defense, too. I think, you know, if anything, that team's going to be looking for a top six forward to throw in their lineup to give them a little bit of secondary scoring. So it, I can yeah, see Yeah, exactly more. that. It, all of that, but plus, like, when your team, like, okay, we can all admit, like, that, it's pretty surprising how good the Calgary Flames have been. You have to reward the locker room. You've got to give them that added boost. Like, yep, we believe in you too, guys. Here's an extra little kick in the ass. Here's a little Jake DeBrusk action. Like, that just sends a message through the locker room, through the organization and the fan base that, like, yeah, we're doing it. Let's fucking turn it up a dial here because we're going all the way now. Um, you do it basically just, just to do that, just that extra spark. Yeah, and that's where Calgary, it just makes the most sense for them to slide into a top six young team still. Uh, but looking to ensure that they can maintain what they've done this year. Uh, but there could be a lot of fits. There could be a lot of fits. Like we could sit here going hypotheticals all day. But if someone sat here and said, Dave, where do you think he should end up? Edmonton. Where do you think he will end up? Sorry, Edmonton fans. Calgary. Uh, I, I, uh, that's the opposite side of it. And no Toronto fans. Stop being delusional and think we're getting every player. And this is coming from a Toronto fan. Okay, we we could use a top six, but I don't think the Bruins are going to be trading DeBrusque to Toronto because I don't know. I just it doesn't seem like that that would really be the wisest decision for Boston, and mm, I just I think Toronto could be looking at other people to bring in uh, to play with them. So Leaf fans, stop with their comments. But Colorado fans are really active too, Par, because there's a team that really hasn't done the greatest, and that's who Toronto plays upcoming. And guess who's coming back in the lineup? for Colorado's game against Toronto. Cause of course, Nathan McKinnon, 
returns to the lineup tomorrow night for Toronto. Why not McKinnon come back and maybe have a hot game for his first game back, eh? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm going to go 15 to nothing, Leafs. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Nathan the- McKinnon is a minus 15. So I liked playing this game before we wrapped up, so I want to do the one-word game, and I'm going to give you each two questions. Then I'll let you both give me one question each because we have an odd number today, so we can't really go around with it. So I'm going to give you two questions each quick, one word that you can state, and I'm going to make this a situational one. Leafs, Oilers, play each other right now. Who wins the game and what's the score? Par. Uh, Leafs, 15 nothing. McDavid, minus 15. <laughs> Dane. <laughs> well, considering that we, we, our whole back end is either has COVID or is injured right now, I would likely say if I was a betting man. Say it, Dane. Know, say no, it, Dane. Say it, Dane. Say it. I can't. I can't believe this. This is recorded. Say it. Say it. Probably pick the Leafs right now. Okay. We don't have. Yo, Dane just said he picked the Leafs to beat Edmonton right now. We're recording the podcast. Full roster. Full roster. Full rosters. Then who wins the game? Leafs fifteen nothing. McDavid minus fifteen. December fifth. There's Edmonton. Uh, Toronto and Toronto. Let's go watch the game, boys. Love that. Now, one more question each. One worded answer. I'm going to name a team to you. Name one word that comes to mind. I'm going to throw you guys for a loop. Vegas Golden Knights. Par. Eichel. Mm, okay. Dane, you're t- the name I'm going to go with with you. Hmm, where do St. Louis Blues. Really throwing you for a loop. Probably something you don't check as much. <laughs> yeah. What a way to just fuck them. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oh, God. That's a top <laughs> yeah, one. no kidding. When the hell did we ever talk about the St. Louis Blues? <laughs> Contender. 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 I like that. Par, one question. Go on. Go on. One question for me. Par, one question. Okay, Dave, you're walking down the street and someone says, your NHL 22 team sucks. Your guys are trash. What do you say to that guy? I say, my puck, and I knock him on his ass. Take the puck. Jim excuse. Jim a snipe. Or I do Jim a pass, and we bury, and we win, and we keep moving up the fucking rankings. It wasn't one word, but I, I-, I like. Yeah, I was going to say, I really like how we're playing the one word game, but it's actually been like paragraphs. <laughs> Dane, your question. All right, I'll just go easy one. I'm just going to say heart trophy. So, Dave, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your word? See, Dane wants you to say an Edmonton Oiler because he said earlier that the Leafs would win. So, he really wants you to say something nice about Edmonton. Tony D'Angelo. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I should say... <laughs> As of Kadri, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> um, I'll, be, wow. I'll be honest. Um, Connor McDavid. There it is. You heard it, Dane. Connor McDavid. Wait, that's all love on the game sports show. Now, that is the one question game that kind of turns into paragraphs, but we do truly answer with one, with one answer. It's fine. We like to try to end the game uh, with that. Get us I threw the game in there. This has been the top shelf edition. A little bit extra time, fellas, but we had fun talking about everything that we could talk about. Alex, to you first. Any final thoughts? Or are you good for wrapping it up, my friend? No, let's get the show on the road. I'm hopping on the wagon. Game sports show. Number one in the world, baby. Let's go. Got, well, not number one in the world. That's not official, but we're up in the top fifty. So go F yourself. You don't oh no, we're getting there. We're 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 getting we're getting on the wagon. It's leaving the station. Boys, hop on. Top 50 in the world at a point. The game sports show at ES, EASHL. Fantastic. Dane, any final thoughts? Or are you good for the wrap-up, my friend? No, just uh, more of the same uh, of Alex. So, uh, I'll see you on the uh, PS5. There. Okay. Love that. All right, fellas. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Dane. Thank you to all of our listeners. So like, follow, and subscribe on all the podcasts of the game sports show. Keep an eye for the TGEM network platform expansion coming to you very soon in our upcoming special edition upload, which will be Theo Flurry, as I mentioned, Norton Superior Brewing Company. This has been presented by The Tap Room and Norton Superior. Make sure to follow them on social media as well as check them out. 
And we're going to have some nice new photos for TGEM and the Game Sports Show. And to people on the group chat of the staff that didn't fucking answer yet, you better do so or I will end your house. How's that sound? I will egg your house and drive my 2021 Silverado through your fucking siding of your house. That's, that's a lot of swearing and aggressiveness at the end of the show. But this has been Top Shelf. Hit like, follow, subscribe. I'm Dave McKeg. I'm here to remind you. Keep your stick on the ice. Swing your bats. Catch your touchdown. Drain your threes. Shoot your shots. Booyah.